What's up, Star Wars fans? Um, this is Darth Watts, and in this video, um, I would like to share some interesting things revealed for Star Wars Episode Nine. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can. Um, hold on. Yeah, still recording. Okay. I'm going to try to see if I can do like a reaction video or something. Or we, or, um, or if I could pull it, or if I, I, I could pull it up to where you guys can see the video, but, um, there's this one detail I think I need to go to my I think I need to go to the actual YouTube channel oh here it is concerns for Star Wars Episode 9 by a lot of fans around the world is the fact that this movie is going to bring in a total of eight new characters into this story. This is Mike Zero. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see okay. the Star Wars yes. content, as well as the sequel trilogy characters that we are already familiar with, but also introduction of some of our favorite legacy characters like Luke, Leia, and Lando, as well as the sequel trilogy characters that we are already familiar with. But also, introducing eight new characters into this story might be a bit much for some people out there. Now, looking at everything here, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film when it comes to some of the set leaks, the set designs, the concept art and storyboard descriptions, etc. Now, when it comes to some of the different set designs that some of the actors and actresses will be working on, starting off with Adam Driver, he is all set and ready to film a scene in December with combating extras addressed as stormtroopers with his lightsaber prop piece. The set design is described as a massive control room that has a lot of unique designs for Kylo Ren to take cover. The sequence is described as having a similarity to Rogue One's Vader slaughter scene. However, it is unaware who Kylo is combating and killing stormtroopers as to why he's doing that. Both John Boyega and Oscar Isaac are also ready to film a small but important scene with Kelly Marie Tran as Rose in an alleyway of a city with downpouring rain. Many rain machines will be used for the sequence and green screens as well, and the puppeteer of BB-8 will be a part of the sequence. It's described as our heroes seeking somebody of importance, which could be the long-rumored Rod of the Hutt to provide resources. Dominic Monaghan actually shot a scene with Naomi Aki inside of a temple-like structure with a ton of horses with CGI markers on their head. Now, now it's said that Monaghan and Aki are leaders on a new world, coming into Star Wars Episode 9, and that they will help Poe, Finn, and Chewbacca, and are described as, of course, providers and supporters. And lastly, Daisy is said to shoot a scene with Mark Hamill. While Daisy sits on a large boulder, the boulder is said to have a type of machinery that will push the set piece off the ground to mimic it levitating. Mark Hamill will be watching over her from behind, and it, this is said to be a training sequence of some kind. I think that the one that really intrigues me the most has all to do with Adam Driver going up against extras dressed as stormtroopers using his lightsaber prop piece. Now, I believe that this honestly ties into what we went over a couple of days ago, involving Kylo Ren actually engaging in a fight sequence between himself and General Hux, where General Hux commands stormtroopers against him. I believe that that sequence connects to this one here that Adam Driver will be filming in December of 2018, just next month. Now, what do I think is going on here? Why would he actually be fighting stormtroopers? Well, like I said, I think it connects to General Hux actually commanding them against Kylo Ren. The other sequence that really does open my eyes a lot has all to do with some of the new characters coming into play here. This is of course portrayed by both Dominic Monaghan and Naomi Aki. 
Now, both Monahan and Aki apparently are going to be leaders on this new world coming into play here for Episode 9 as a new planet. Now, they will be interacting with both Poe and Finn, Oscar Isaac and John Boyega, of course, as well as Chewbacca. Now, the horses, we actually saw leaked photographs of them, I believe it was during the very end of the summer. That connects to those leaked photographs, absolutely. Now, looking at everything else, the other thing that I really do want to go over is this sequence that involves both Poe, Finn, and Rose walking through an alleyway in the downpouring rain. But they're seeking somebody of importance, so both Poe, Finn, and Rose do have a mission in Episode 9 where they're seeking somebody. Now, I believe that that connects to the big rumor, I believe it was back in July, that Rada the Hutt, which is Jabba the Hutt's son, would have a part in Episode 9. And lastly, I want to go over Daisy Ridley's sequence with Mark Hamill, the one that I am really interested in. Now, we've been hearing about this lightly before, I would say, last month or so, where Daisy Ridley will be shooting a scene by herself with Mark Hamill by her side, where she's actually going to be on top of this boulder, and this type of machinery is going to lift it up kind of emulating that she's levitating it, giving us a call back to the Empire Strikes Back between both Luke and Yoda. Now, is this another training scene? It seems as so. If it's not, it could just be another lesson by Luke to Rey to reach out with her feelings with the Force. And to me, Luke's training was basically just teaching her why the Jedi need to end. It wasn't legitimate training. So we could actually be getting this in Episode 9, and J.J., could very well be giving us a new type of training that we have never seen before, where a force ghost is actually training a person in the mortal world on the big screen. Something that we have never seen before at all in any Star Wars movie to date. Anyways guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the con Okay. Um, well, I think, I think it's, um, like, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I'll buy it, but it kind of sounds cool, but I don't know if I'll buy that rumor. Um, there's something other I want to, want, want to show you. Um, I'm, I apologize if you guys can't see the videos because I do not know how to, um, make a full reaction video I I was gonna try to but I apologize if you guys can't see the video can't see the the video but at least you can hear it but there's something else I want to show you and it's about Snoke's death was faked find the video here it is Snoke's power is insane the British Kylo and Ray might be across the galaxy yet he could have warned himself of his imminent end or did he dive in today's video, I wanted to let everyone know about our epic FX lightsaber giveaway. To enter this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe, like, if you actually enjoy it, okay. comment below what color lightsaber you um, let's get to that. ends December 1st. Now, to today's video. Let's put it straight. Snoke's death was fake. He's not dead. He was never dead. There's no way someone that powerful, someone who threw hooks to the ground from across the galaxy would cut in half 
like string cheese. I mean, kind of does look like string cheese, but that's beyond the point. The point is, Snoke is just too darn powerful. On his weekends, he throws people around like rag dolls, manipulates, redefines the meaning of sexy. And even brings four Simon to Star Wars with men's power like that. Did that be some sort of backstory? So, who is Snoke? What we currently know about Snoke? Well, Snoke is a force sensitive humanoid male that was, or maybe still is, the supreme leader of the First Order. He's either Sith nor Jedi, and in the last Jedi Visual Dictionary, they actually use an entire subheader titled The Heart of Darkness. Now he always disguises his true nature, and that's not all. We also know Snoke is a mad fanboy of Darth Vader, sporting a real nice golden ring with an obsidian stone derived from Darth Vader's castle. Hmm, is that why Snoke so obsessed with turning Kylo Ren into the next Vader? Or did Snoke actually know Vader? Star Wars theory thinks he did, but even if that was true, Snoke really hasn't succeeded in turning or making a new Vader. Or did he? Actually, he did. You know what gave it off? The Raylo connection. If Snoke's supposedly dead, then why is the connection still intact? Snoke, after all, breached the connection. I think I figured it out. It has to do with a new force ability called Force Projection. We know the Force killed Luke. Mark Hamill himself even admitted. But here's the thing. Luke wasn't the first to Force Project. Turning out Snoke Force Projected before Luke. Do you remember when Kylo physically interacted with Rey from across the galaxy? Kylo even reacted to Luke's loud force push. Not only that, but Luke himself did see Kylo. How is this possible? Was this part of Snoke's scheme to prevent Luke from coming to Rey and to even kill Luke? We'll cover that in a later video, but if Snoke already knew how to force protect, then why did Snoke use it to protect himself? That's exactly what happened. Snoke's throne room illusion. Snoke is a master strategist. He learned people's weaknesses and manipulated them to his advantage. He knew of Kylo's instability. Kylo did try to attack Snoke once already and he even emphasized Kylo's weaknesses multiple times. Why would Snoke, someone whom we've never seen break Kylo's civility before, even in times of high stress, all of a sudden start sending a barrage of insults to Kylo? What if it was part of Snoke's scheme to get Kylo to act? After all, he wanted Kylo's conflicted soul to fully commit to the dark side. He couldn't achieve that through instruction. He had to make Kylo give in to his anger and strike him down just like Emperor Palpatine wanted Luke to do in Return of the Jedi. Strike me down with it. Give in to your anger. Only once Kylo gave in to his anger and killed Snoke. Then Kylo had finally completed his training exactly like Snoke wanted him to do. Did Snoke succeed? Yes. Yes, he did. Don't take my words. Look at Kylo. He choked out. He blasted Luke for an entire army. Tops it off with a master plan to annihilate everyone. In other words, Snoke succeeded without a single scratch. That's not all. We've got a boatload more of evidence compiled into the list. Bring him before us. Snoke is alive supporting evidence list. Point number one, the biggest point, Snoke only has 10 minutes of screen time total. Point number two, Snoke's hologram looks and sounds much older. The droid we seek is aboard the Millennium Falcon. Point number three, Snoke's attendants or advisors weren't present in the throne room fight scene. Where did they go? Point number four, if Snoke really did die, highly likely, but if he did, he knew it was coming. How do we know? He prioritized comfort with his ugly golden slippers and clothing. It's likely Snoke was planning to use a radical dark side force ability called Transfer Essence, cheating death itself using a clone of himself. Point number five, the biggest clue to it all is the ancient mosaic. Its first appearance is in The Last Jedi or after we see Snoke for the first time in person. Final point, here's the dead giveaway. The ancient mosaic is set in the floor of the Octu Temple, depicting the Prime Jedi or the founder of the Jedi Order. Look at that. It looks like Snoke. Come on, look at the head. It's like Snoke took a selfie. If that wasn't enough for you, J.J. Abrams also promised Episode 9 will tie all of the Star Wars movies into one film. Could Snoke be that linking figure? Probably.
But enough from me. What do you think? Do you think Snoke is alive, or do you think Snoke actually died? But his backstory will play a huge role in Episode Nine. Let us know in the comments below. Uh -huh. Wait. So, do you guys think that Snoke actually died, or do you think that um, Snoke actually survived? Now, I know I did a video on that. Not too long ago. Um, I think Snoke... I think Snoke survived, honestly. Um, because there is no way someone that powerful... Could have died that easily. Someone who can throw Hux... On the ground... From all the way across the galaxy... So I believe that Sno Snoke's death was faked. In fact, I don't... Because Snoke was probably never there. And I still think Snoke is returning in Star Wars Episode Nine. And you guys know that J.J. Abrams likes to keep secrets on casting characters. Just so you guys know. But anyway, that's all I got for this video. Let me know in the comment section what you think... that Whether you think Snoke should return in Star Wars Episode 9 or whether he should remain dead. Let me know in the comments comment section and I'll be checking back to see what you guys have to say. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Um, click the notification so you no get notified whenever I upload a video. And I will see you guys later.